definitely a real world scenario for you here and it's going to start with a nice simple telnet connection but most frustrating things in networking as in life i think start off with something very simple so let's go ahead and make this telnet connection happen and i'll just up arrow since i did test it i admit and we're going to enter the password i configured now let me ask you this pop quiz I put in a password, that's all I was prompted for, so I obviously did not use the username password database bit. So you know I put login on the VTY lines on router three, and you know I configured a password. What other command can you tell right now that I put on the VTY lines? Privilege level 15, because I was put immediately into enable mode as soon as I authenticated, otherwise I would have been dropped off at user exec, and I would have had to put in and enable password if one had been set. But we've already covered that, so I know you knew that, but I like to quiz you every once in a while. Make sure you're watching. Anyway, let's go back to the chase here with router three. Now, let's say that I shut an interface down here on router three, fast ethernet zero slash zero. I didn't check to see if it was open or not because, um, well, I'm not really getting any log messages here, am I? Hmm, so maybe it was already shut well, let's do a no shut and see if we see anything. Sometimes it can take a few seconds, but it doesn't appear to be appearing. So what's going on here? First off, let's check out and see what status the interface is in right now. And it's up and up. So everything's fine with the interface, but why didn't I get any log messages? Hmm. Because sure, you know, I ran show interface and I was able to see whether the interface was up or down. But if you're troubleshooting something, the log messages on the screen really come in handy, right? I mean, you can see when line protocols come up, see when they go down, that kind of thing. And I really want my log messages when I'm telnetting into another device. So why aren't I getting them here? Well, what command should we run first to even begin to see everything that's going on with the logging? Show logging, right? And you can see here in the middle, console logging, monitor logging, buffer logging, exception logging, and persistent logging. That's a lot of logging. And if I hit enter there and look at my last line, I've got trap logging. So it looks like I have six different kinds of logging here. And we've looked at console, we've looked at buffer, we know what's going on there. We've looked at trap logging as well. We know that's for the syslog server, so that kind of narrows it down. So what is going on here? Why aren't I getting my log messages? Well, the good news is the kind of logging that needs to be enabled is enabled by default for remote connections, and that is monitor logging. This is the one that we're concerned with right now. Monitor logging, that's when you're telnetting in, remotely connecting in, and you want to see the log messages. So that looks good. I do want to show you, though, what it looks like if that is off. And it's not going to surprise you, but I want to show it to you anyway. The command is logging monitor to turn it on. So just put a no in front of it to disable it. And you can see now monitor logging disabled. This is the first thing you want to check. And notice that I am on the device I am telnetting to. I'm telnetting from 1 to 3. So monitor logging has to be on on router 3. So we'll go ahead and turn it back on. And you know I'm going to verify. So we've got level debugging. That is the default level, as we can see. And we've got some messages logged, but we don't seem to be seeing them on our screen. And this is the other command you got to watch out for, because I'm going to go back to the board here for just a moment. And just a quick visual reminder that you do need logging monitor enabled on the router you are telnetting to. So we checked that. We saw it was on. I showed you how to turn it off and then turn it back on. We verified that. So everything is fantastic. Now, the other thing you've got to have is the terminal monitor command. And you've got to have that running during your session. So what I'll do is do a conf t and then a terminal monitor. And I get invalid input. And notice where the caret is, or the arrowhead, or whatever you want to call it. It's at the beginning of the word monitor. So terminal would seem to be a legal command. And the only option I have here is entry retry interval. Terminal Q polling interval. That's not what we want. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> actually I know what it is, but it's definitely not what we need right now. The reason I bring that up is you have to run terminal monitor at the enable prompt. 
And now let's try to go back to the interface. Let's generate some messages here. And we'll do a shut here. And let's see what we get now. And now we're getting our log messages. Ta-da! And let's go ahead and do a quick no shut there as well. And we'll just make sure we get our messages opening up. And we do change state to up. And everything looks fantastic. So I'm still telling edit in. You know, that really didn't have anything to do with it. And you see now I'm even getting a log message saying, where is this being configured from? And we're so used to in this course, and you know, when you're connected directly, you see configured from console by console. But we're not seeing that here. We're seeing configured from console by VTY0, and it even shows the source IP address of the Telnet connection. So, you know, it, it looks so simple. But it can get very frustrating if you forget the terminal monitor command because it's just not going to work and you're not getting your messages. So quick verbal, a quick pictorial review here, I should say. When you're tone adding in, you've got to have logging monitor enabled the monitor logging enabled on the router you are telnetting to and then you need to use the terminal monitor command during that telnet session and then you will start seeing your logging messages nothing to it when you know exactly what to do right so that will definitely help you in the real world at least one time in your career guaranteed and hopefully on the exam as well coming up next we're going to look at some banner configurations and then we'll do some other this and that banners coming up next